Hello everyone, Mark Yerkes here, coming to you on a very cold day in January from a place you may know nothing about. This is Skopje, North Macedonia, or as the locals prefer to call it, the Republic of Macedonia. Now, if you have ever considered a trip to Europe but you weren't quite sure where to go or what to see, you may want to consider Skopje. It has a little bit of everything, including some obscure Christian history. So stay tuned. Many people complain about the odd variety of statues and styles of architecture in this city. Some have gone so far as to describe them as tacky and ugly. Where else would you find classic Greek and Roman buildings mixed with Ottoman Turkish baths Austro-Italian architecture, a fake Spanish galleon, and London double-decker buses that were made in China. But, when you take time to think about it, the mixture kind of makes sense. From its founding, Skopje was right at the crossroads of trade. This city was a hub for caravans under the Ottomans. Merchants would bring their goods from Central Europe through the Balkans, from Serbia and Bulgaria, from Italy through Albania, from the Byzantine and Ottoman empires of Turkey and beyond. And of course, there was the tremendous influence of the Greeks to the south due to the early conquest of Philip of Macedon and Alexander the Great. Skopje is truly a melting pot of cultures. It has the largest Muslim bazaar existing in Europe second only to the Grand Bazaar of Istanbul. From a high vantage point, you can see numerous mosques in close proximity. Depending upon where you stand, you may hear multiple calls to worship coming simultaneously from different minarets. The bazaar is a major tourist destination, not only for its many stores, food options and craft shops, but also for its historic sites. It lies just below the walls of the Kale Fortress. A devastating 1963 earthquake destroyed the interior structures of the fortress, but from atop the walls, people can get an excellent view of the bazaar, the city center, and the bridges spanning the Vardar River. Right now I'm crossing one of three bridges that span the Vardar River leading from the main square to the bazaar and the fortress area. Now, you may be noticing that there's a lot of statues behind me. Well, this bridge, in fact, has 26 statues, 13 on each side, which says a lot about Macedonia. It may not have a huge population or a lot of money or natural resources, but if you ever need a statue, you know who to ask. Once a year, bridges in Macedonia play a special role in religious practice. I happen to be here in late January when the Feast of the Epiphany takes place. Unlike the Catholic feast of January 6, which commemorates the Magi bringing gifts to baby Jesus, the Orthodox Church's Epiphany arrives on January 19 to remember his baptism, hence the need for water. People crowd around one of the stone bridges every year to experience the ceremony for Epiphany. Unfortunately, I went to the wrong bridge, so might have to settle for a distant shot. It looks like there's quite a crowd up ahead. So, let's see what happens. On this day, political leaders and dignitaries of the church gather on the bridge to hear the message and blessing of the archbishop. Many of the bolder men await in the cold water for the exciting moment when he throws a consecrated wooden cross representing Jesus into the river. The race is on. Whoever gets the cross first obtains special blessing for the entire year and recognition, at least until the next epiphany. 
If one is looking at Macedonia's complexity with a negative attitude, it is easy to be critical. But there are many positive aspects that have carried over from the past to the present. For instance, the food is wonderful. Foodies should enjoy a traditional meze or tapas bowl platter at one of Skopje's fine restaurants, where they can taste a variety of dishes. The cuisine derives from many cultures with exotic spices and styles of cooking, emphasizing what is grown in season. A trip to the green market proves the freshness of the produce. It is a busy place where the locals shop for everything from meats and cheese, baked goods, fruits and vegetables recently harvested, to dried fruits like dates, prunes and figs, a selection of olives and spices with varying degrees of heat. All right, I'm in the Green Market, and one of the things that you can get here is fresh burrick. Burrick is a great pastry. It has different fillings. Sometimes it's filled with cheese. Sometimes it's filled with marmalade. I'm going to pick up two of the marmalades, 20 dinar a piece. That comes to about 40 cents each. What a deal. Uh, that with a cup of coffee, and you are good until lunch. Macedonia Square is flanked on both sides by two prominent statues. At one end is Philip of Macedon, who brought this region into his own domain, and at the other end, across the river, is Alexander the Great, Philip's son who additionally conquered Egypt, Asia Minor, Persia, and kingdoms reaching all the way to India. There is already an ingrown tolerance of religious views in Macedonia, though that has been tested on occasions along both religious and ethnic lines. The majority of the population is Orthodox Christian, but there is also a sizable Muslim minority. Twenty years ago, one quarter of the population was Albanian Muslim, but the percentage of Muslims has grown since then because they have a higher birth rate and because of recent immigration. As the minority has sought more say in the affairs of the nation, tensions occasionally increase. <laughs> Among most ethnic Macedonians, Eastern Orthodox Christianity is recognized as part of the national identity. A Millennium Cross was built at the top of Mount Vodno in 2002 to recognize 2,000 years of Christianity in the region. But even this has created controversy since the construction followed a time of inter-ethnic conflict the year before. The view of Skopje and the surrounding mountains is fantastic. It is a great getaway spot for tourists and locals alike that provides hiking and biking trails during the summer and a sledding slope for children in winter months all beneath the shadow of a powerful religious symbol. But we must remember, after all, that it is just a symbol. This is the Millennium Cross. Stand at the base of it and you will feel very small indeed. It is 66 meters tall. That's more than 215 feet. It's more than twice the size of the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. But just as the Christ statue in Rio does not reflect the character of that city. Neither does the Millennium Cross represent the overall character of the people of Skopje or of Macedonia. No man-made structure can do that. Romans 12 verses 16 to 18 tells us, Give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with everyone. Christian believers should not be ashamed of the cross of Christ and what it represents, but neither should we use the symbols of our faith to purposely or inadvertently express control over others. The Millennium Cross makes a big, bold public statement, but God does not judge our Christian devotion based upon the size of a church or a religious monument above a city. 
He judges each person individually based upon whether or not we believe the Heavenly Father's testimony concerning His Son, the Savior He sent. And if we believe and have been saved by grace through faith, then our actions will be judged according to our knowledge of God's will, the extent that Christ's love dwells in our heart, and whether we surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The cross of Christ is meant to be a symbol of humility, not superiority. This plaque shows a quote from Mother Teresa, who shortly after her death was canonized by the Roman Catholic Church as St. Teresa of Calcutta. It is one of many throughout the city. Most people do not realize that she was a Macedonian, born and raised in Skopje. The Memorial House of Mother Teresa is located near the city center and is open to the public. There you can find many of her personal items and information regarding her charity among India's poorest of the poor. But this building is not really where her house was located. Right now I'm standing on the pedestrian walkway midway between the Macedonia Arch and Macedonia Square. And the reason that I'm here is because this is the actual location of Mother Teresa's childhood home. As you can see, there's a memorial here to her memory. And this is the actual spot where the house stood. Prior to the 1963 earthquake, this was a residential area, but the earthquake changed things significantly. People still come here and leave flowers and prayers behind. Mother Teresa still stands as an example of service. For the Holy Bible points out, faith without works is dead. And what counts is faith expressing itself through love. Her quotes reflect an understanding of this truth, but she has her critics. The Bible also states, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Some question the motivation behind Mother Teresa's charity. Did she believe that her religious actions were somehow granting her access to heaven? The Bible is clear. If she is now in heaven, it is not because of doing good works, but only because of faith in the completed work of Jesus Christ. As the Apostle Paul points out, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. What people find offensive about the message of the cross is its statement that no matter how many good works we do in life, they cannot pay for our sin or earn our way into heaven. We want to have faith in ourselves, but only faith in what God has done can save us. We are saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed the unusual complexity of this city. For future adventures, be sure to click the notification bell and the subscribe button. And it would help if you sent us a like and any comments. That will help the channel to grow. In the meantime, God bless, and I'll see you next time we seek some obscure Christian history.